you are not clapping for me, can we rise and do it better? Rise to your feet and do it better. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus while standing. Somebody put your hands together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to rise to our feet. Brothers and sisters, wherever you are, please stand to your feet. Today is the last day for this convention and we are trusting God tonight that something unusual will happen. How many of you agree with me that tonight as soon as our dad and the Lord stand on the pulpit Everyone shall exceed expectation. If you believe you are one of us, shout a mega hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands and appreciate God for all the Lord has been doing, beginning from Monday, for Tuesday, for Wednesday, for Thursday, and today. Let's thank Him in advance. Give him praise, wave your hands to him, exalt the name of the Lord. Thank him because he's faithful. Thank him for salvation. Thank him for healings. Thank him for deliverance. Thank him for major breakthrough. Thank him for all the testimonies we have had. Go ahead, beloved brethren, magnify him. Wave your hands to him. Another session has come. A time to be blessed. A time to exceed expectation financially. Come on, lift up your hands. Appreciate Him. Thank Him for what He has done. So that He can do more. Thank Him. Praise Him. Give Him glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The choir will help us as we take this song. When I was down and all my soul so weary When troubles comes and my heart burden be Then I am still and when you're in the silence Until you come And see the one with me You raise me up You raise me up So I can stand on mountains You raise me up Father, we're trusting you for a lifting at this hour. We are done where we used to be. Take us to another level as we exceed expectations in Jesus' precious name. Oh, we make welcome the Holy Spirit and we give the Lord Jesus a very big Really big, big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, and everyone watching us online at this time, 
I've been asked to minister to us very quickly on breaking financial limitation. Breaking financial limitation. You want to exceed expectations. You need to break every form of financial limitation. The Bible told us in third John verse 2. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Thou mayest prosper is talking about financial prosperity and be in health, which is physical prosperity, even as your soul prospereth which is equally spiritual prosperity. So it is God's ultimate desire for each and every one of us to prosper financially. That is why he said, I wish above all things, much more than you could think, God wants you to exceed financially. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I have come to discover that if you want to break every financial limitations, you need to have the keys that unlock financial bondage. A limitation is that thing that kept you down. A limitation is that thing that prevents you from rising. A limitation is that thing that kept you on a spot. A limitation is that thing that will not allow you to exceed expectations. A limitation is that thing that wants you to stop where your father stop. Today I pray that everything that kept you down financially... They shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Everyone, one way or the other, has been limited financially. I have come to realize that all classes of people the rich, the poor, many have suffered financial bondage and captivity. Poverty is like a cancer. It's something that will not allow you to fulfill divine mandate. And so if you must break financial limitation, you need financial dominion, financial freedom. Financial freedom is breaking off the shackles of those things that kept you down. And other says that the rich also cries. It's not far fetch. That though we have some people that are rich, but they are still under financial bondage. They are still battling with financial limitation. I used to have an uncle. He's no more today. But several years back in a battle, I visited him and on getting to his house I noticed that for months my uncle in the early 80s God blessed him he was able to purchase a Pojo Pojo 505 Evolution it is called we cover it every day Maybe once in a week, we remove the tarpaulin that we used to cover it. 
and wash the car and cover it back. It was one of those that God blessed early in the family who was able to also purchase a fabric sofa and also refused to remove the nylon. All the foams in all the rooms were covered with nylon. And I told his wife, what is the purpose of a car if it's not fulfilling its purpose? Why should the car be covered? So that day I removed the nylon, take off all the nylon that cover the chairs, the foams and everything. And my uncle came back, was very furious. Do you know how much I bought it? Do you know that we, it will get spoiled on time? I said, uncle, the fact that you are rich means that you should know the usefulness of money. You must be in charge and money must not control you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. The Bible says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. How many things? How many things? The Bible said that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute and willing to communicate. Beloved brethren, the purpose of being wealthy is that you should do good, willing to communicate, ready to distribute. In other words, the purpose of God blessing you is for you to have the mindset, the understanding that wealth in this kingdom is about its distribution and not about its accumulation. The Bible said, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay holds on eternal life. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation. God is blessing you so that you can share with others. God is blessing you so that you can know the purpose and the usefulness of money. God is blessing you so that you can communicate words to others. Anything outside of this is not of God. So words in this kingdom is about its communication, not about its accumulation. Praise the Lord. Why do we need to break off from financial limitation. The reason is simple. Because of the pains of poverty. The pains of poverty. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 4. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 4. The Bible says, Words make it many friends. But the poor is separated from his neighbor. Wealth has a lot of friends, but the poor is separated from his friends. If you have money, you see a lot of people flopping around you. If the Lord has blessed you, you see many people coming to you. But once you are poor, beloved brethren, you stand alone. A lot of people don't want to associate with poverty. Praise see the Lord. Proverbs 10 verse 15. But trace the same point. Proverbs 10 and verse 15. He said the rich man's wealth is a strong city. And the destruction of the poor is their poverty. The rich man's wealth is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. 
Money is good, beloved brethren. No wonder the Bible says that money answers all things. Even though money is not everything. I like you to know that money has its limitations. Money is good for its prosperity of the kingdom. But equally money has its limitation. For example, your money can buy you a water bed, but cannot give you sound sleep. Your money can guarantee you all medical services in the world. The money cannot keep you alive. We have a lot of people that have access to money. But money fails when sickness comes. Your money can cause a rich man to marry a beauty queen. But also agree with me that money may not cause the man to win a love. Your money can give you all the security gadgets in the world. But your money cannot guarantee you maximum security. Praise the Lord. So money is good. Your money can buy you any judgment in the world today. But of course we know your money cannot buy you the white throne judgment. Can I hear you say amen? Can I hear you say amen? The truth of the matter is that money has its limitation. And that is why we need to break off from the pains of poverty. It's a terrible thing to be poor. When you consider the pains of poverty, you are isolated. You are treated as an underlying. Poverty causes people to move away from you. They look down on you. And that is the reason why today we need to exceed expectation. We need to exceed expectation in the area of finance. And I'm trusting God that God Almighty will grant us the opportunity, the grace, the privilege to break every financial limitation in the name of Jesus. For the record, I would like to stress this quickly. Money comes from God. Financial dominion, financial lifting only comes from God. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. The Bible says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Somebody say power. Someone say power. Power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as unto these days. Money comes from the Lord. So if anyone is here trusting God for financial breakthrough, you only need to look up to God. Look up to God who is the source. Because if you are disconnected from the source, it's just a matter of time. You will soon lack resources. Psalm 66 and verse 12. Psalm 66 and verse 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But thou broughtest us out into where? A worthy place. Coming into a worthy place is only orchestrated by divine presence. By God himself. You can't come into the worthy place if God did not permit I want to salute God's general, Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo, for he has done so much on this topic yesterday. But you know the truth of the matter is that he also said he spoke as a businessman. But I need you to know that the earth is prepared against the day of battle, but safety 
is of the Lord. Long lasting money only comes from God. If God is the one that bless you, then no enemy can curse you. Can I hear your amen to that? I also like you to know that even though people take short course to wealth, short cuts are liable to cut their life short. Proverbs 28 verse 20. The book of Proverbs 28 verse 20. The Bible says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Another translation said, shall not go unpunished. Many people are not willing to wait upon the Lord. A lot of people are looking for Jehovah Sharp Sharp. They want to cut corner into making worlds. And that is why you see a lot of ritual killings in the world today. Because people are willing to cut corner. What is the purpose of the kind of wealth you acquire at the expense of your health? Because eventually, you will spend the whole world in trying to recover your health. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 13, 11. Proverbs 13, 11. Proverbs 13, 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but it that gathered by labor shall increase. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, he that gathered by labor shall increase. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Pastor Matthew said there is no bad money yesterday. That money only takes his coloration from his handler. Money is just a legal tender. But the one who's handling the money is the one who determines if the money is clean or not. Glory be to God. Money is essential. Many of us give money different names. In church, we call it tithes and offering. When you borrow it from the bank, what do they call it? It's called a loan. Hallelujah. When you are paid for your own month's service, it is called what? Salary, or you call it wages. It's still money. When you wrongly receive it to pervert judgment, it is called what? I can't hear you. It's called bribe. What you give to a waiter for a service render is called what? A tip. It's still money. What you collect after retirement is called what? Pensions is still money. What you pay during a marriage right is called what? Dowry is still called money. And what you pay in court as a when you make a divorce and you are asked to pay it, what do they call it? It's called fine. And that fine is still what? It's still money. Praise the Lord. What you pay to kidnappers when someone is suddenly kidnapped? What do they call it? Ransom is still money. What you get as a reward offer for increased productivity for essential services is called incentives and it's also money. What you get as a compensation for service could also be called emoluments. Praise see the Lord. What about what you pay in school? What is it called? Fees. What about what you pay to your landlord? It's called rent. It's still money. Pastors, what you receive after ministration? I, I didn't say that. You said it yourself. Praise the Lord. Money is good. But there are keys to unlock 
the world of financial prosperity. You can't break financial limitations until you possess these keys. Money is of value. And wherever valuables are kept, there is a door that seals it up. And that is why you need keys. Because if you don't have these financial keys, you may be frustrated in your attempts looking for one. In this service, as God opened my eyes to see, I'm going to be releasing to us the six keys to break every financial limitations. The six keys that will break every financial limitation. Praise the Lord. Key number one. For those of you who are writing very quickly. Key number one is what I call the key of obedience. The key of obedience. The key of obedience. Obedience that is not absolute is important. Obedience that is not absolute is what? Is important. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, everybody said to observe, and to do, to observe, and to do, to observe, and to do, how many of his commandments, all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And the Bible says in verse 2, He said, and all these blessings, the word these is plural, meaning every form of blessings your heart desire. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Many times the voice of the Lord is sounding so loud that the voice of the people and the voice of reasoning overcrowding it. Beloved brethren, you have not taken a step into breaking financial limitation until you fulfill the key of obedience. The key of obedience. The Bible says in Isaiah 1 verse 19, He said, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Every land has its own goodies. He takes your willingness, He takes your obedience. Many people are willing, but only few are obedient. Can I ask you to stand to your feet? Wherever you are, can you stand to your feet? Very quickly, stand to your feet. Now jam your hands together. Wow. Amen. That's okay. Now when you look around, you will see that some persons are still sitting down. You will understand the point I'm making. Many are willing, but only few are obedient. And many of divine blessings, they are arranged and well packaged in our obedience. 99% of obedience is not required when it comes to this kingdom. It takes 100% obedience. Imagine a man or a young man or a young woman that left home this morning coming to church singing as he or she was coming oh single single praise the lord oh single single oh, praise the lord and all of a sudden you get into the auditorium and a, an usher standing there maybe slim maybe short like myself down to earth and the usher said Good morning, sir. Good morning. Please, can you sit down here? 
And you look at the usher, don't you know who I am? We are the leaders here. We know where to sit. You must be one of the new young adults that just came into the church. God bless you. I know where to sit. Oh, single, single. Praise the Lord. And you go ahead and take another seat which was not assigned to you by the usher standing there who happens to be the power that be. The Bible said the power that be are ordained by God. Now, if you take another seat, listen to this. This is the implication. That usher standing there represents the authority of the pastor. Pastor represents the authority of the general overseer. That the geo represents the authority of heaven. Are you still with me? Now the Bible says that the power that be are ordained by God. That usher may be little before you, but once you disobey her and you take another seat, you miss your blessing for that service. Because where she asks you to sit, that is where heaven, in accordance to his word, has programmed your blessing. You see the reason why many people come to church, but only few had come to the knowledge of Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, be obedient. Now, can I ask you to put your hands together at this time? Can I ask you to do that? Now, can I ask you to make some noise in the house? Come on! Hallelujah! God bless you. You may take your seat. The key of obedience. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 12 to 23. First Samuel 15, verse 12 to 23. Here you see the story of God giving King Saul a second chance. He first gave him opportunity in First Samuel chapter 13. But Saul could no longer wait because in the Bible there are no king priests. You are either a king or you are a priest. Saul at that time happens to be a king. But the Bible told us that Israel will not go to war until a sacrifice has been made. Saul was expecting Samuel to come and perform the sacrifice. And at that junction, a lot of people has left him because he was busy waiting. Israel will not go to war or the sacrifice has been made. Now the enemy has gathered together at Michmash, ready to wage war against the children of Israel. And the Bible says immediately, King Saul offered the sacrifice which only a priest would have offered. Why did Samuel delay? Because of the aftermath of the statements made. I believe he must have been in consultation with the Trinity. Asking God, we don't need to be changing kings. Let the kingdom of Saul reign forever. And God said, I have told you. I'll give you a man after my own heart. A man that will obey me when I instruct. I'll give you a man... That his loyalty would be to me. And someone said, please, Lord, we don't want to be changing King God said on one condition. If you maintain your prayer, go down there. When you get to your people, if you meet Saul waiting for you, his kingdom will be forever. Which means there wouldn't have been anything called King David. But Saul couldn't wait. He said, because I saw the people scatter from me. And you have not come according to the time appointed. I therefore force myself to offer a sacrifice which only a priest would have offered. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, your kingdom over Israel will have been established forever. He said, but now 
the kingdom will not continue. Can I pray for somebody in the house? May your kingdom not be discontinued on the account of disobedience. May your kingdom not be discontinued on the account of the people. If you believe it, shout and make an amen. Chapter 15, God gave him another chance. Go and destroy the Amalekites. Destroy the kings. Everything that breed. What did Saul did? He said, the people said I should spear the fat limbs. And he also equally speared the king. He speared the king. Praise the Lord. As soon as Samuel returned, he said, what have you done? He said, the people said we should make sacrifice to the Lord. And Samuel said, did the Lord delight in the sacrifice other than obeying his voice? That is why obedience is a mega key in this kingdom. You cannot do without it. You want money, you want peace, you want long life, you want anointing, you want grace, whatever it is you desire. You want to exceed expectation. Number one key is obedience. So some myself for to obey is better than sacrifice and to akin and the fat of rams. I wish so could see into the future and know the reason why God will give such a brutal command. Destroy everything that breathes, including the children that suck. Why will God give such a command? Because there is a tribe that wickedness is in their DNA. I know many of you have not thought about it. Have you ever asked yourself what was the offense of Mordecai to Ammon? Why is it that Ammon wanted Mordecai dead by all means? Someone said it's because Mordecai refused to bow down. He's not enough to want to finish his entire race. But you check through the foundation. Who was Mordecai? The Bible said Mordecai is the grandson of Kish. A Benjamite. The father of Saul. And who was Ammon? Ammon the Agagite. The surviving grandson of King Agag that King Saul speared. So one way or the other, he must have had in history that is the generation of Saul that wiped out his race. Many a times when you refuse to finish a battle, you might be passing it to another generation. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. The key of obedience. Number two, the key of faithfulness. You want to break financial limitation. You need the key of faithfulness. The key of faithfulness. Proverbs 28, 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. He that maketh haste to be rich will not be innocent. Luke chapter 16 and verse 10. Luke 16 and verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Many of us will say, oh God, try me with money. You will know that I love you. You will see I will bless you. Give me one million. Give me ten million. Just try me with money. And God will begin to try you with one thousand error. He wants to be sure that when you receive one thousand, hundred error will not be too much for you to pay as tight. He that is faithful in that which is least shall be made to oversee much. Your financial ability is what determines your financial capacity. You remember the story of the talent. The Bible said, the master gave one of his servants five talents. He gave one two. And he gave that man one talent. And the man went to go and hid it. But there is something the scripture says. He said he gave them according to their several ability. Meaning what? Your financial ability is what determines your financial capacity. God has no problem of releasing wealth. 
is just not a waster of resources. He wants to be sure that what you are asking for, you can manage it. What you are asking God to give to you, you can handle it. Because if you can't, God is not willing to waste kingdom resources. What you are trusting God to receive at the end of tonight, are you prepared for it? You are asking God to give you 20 million and yet you don't have a bank account. If you release the money, where do you want to keep it? Preparation is the mother of manifestation. This you need to understand. You need to start preparing for the next level you are praying for. Prepare for it. You want God to increase you financially. Then you need to enlarge your heart. So that your heart can accommodate that which is coming. If you have problem of paying tithe, and yet you are trusting God for billion, the little God has given to you, you are not faithful. Listen to this. Faithfulness thrives on three things. Faithfulness thrives on three things. Number one, the fear of God. The fear of God. Ecclesiastes told us, he said, now let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Faithfulness strives on the fear of God. Lack of this has caused a lot of people to eat what they are not supposed to eat. When you eat your tithe, it's as good as eating some paper which will not digest. As believers, we are trained to know this. Right from childhood, it has been part of us. Check, check out your grandparents in the village. With the little, little things they are receiving, they don't joke with their tithes. These are men and women of wisdom, even in their old age. They know they are right from their wrong. If gray hair cannot teach you wisdom, I believe it's not internet that will teach you wisdom. Praise the Lord. Faithfulness strives on the fear of God. Number two, faithfulness strives on a sense of contentment. You need to know that what you have now is enough for now. Don't kill yourself. Don't copy anybody. Don't try to be like A or B. What you have now is enough for now. If you want God to increase what you have, then you need to enlarge your heart. Enlarge your capacity. It has always been the problem of handling capacity, not the problem of God's releases his blessing. What you have now is enough for now. Trade with what you have. Invest what you have. That which you have, make use of it. Everyone that God bless, who are at the point of collapsing financially, God always asks them, what do you have in your hand? No matter how little it is, what do you have in your hand? Because when His blessing is coming, He will only increase that which you have in your hand. What you have now is enough for now. But you can get something better. Hallelujah. Faithfulness strives on the fear of God. Faithfulness strives on a sense of contentment. And finally, faithfulness strives on a sense of appreciation. On a sense of what? Appreciation. Tell your neighbor, say sense of appreciation. You must always learn how to appreciate people, especially when good things are done for you. You must learn how to say thank you for every little, little show of help that is rendered to you. Don't be ungrateful. For Monday, for Tuesday, for Wednesday, for Thursday, and for Friday, have we said thank you to him? 
Now go ahead and say thank you Jesus. I can hear you say thank you Jesus. Even Jesus himself desire appreciation. Remember when 10 lepers were cleansed. He said we did not tend our cleanse. How come it's only one that came back? Which means Jesus expects your returning. You need to return. You need to get back to appreciate. You need to come back and say thank you. He said only this Samaritan came back. What happened to the rest nine? Where are the nine? Probably they are Jews. They are brothers to Jesus. And they feel what is the point in thanking him? He's only fulfilling his obligation. Why should we always say thank you to Daddy Gio? After all, it's our Gio. It's our daddy. He's fulfilling his responsibility. I've come to realize some facts. If you have a home, and in the same home, you have your daughters, and probably an house herb. Imagine the mother of the house goes to the market to buy undies. And you came back and gave it to them, including the house herb. If what you give the house herb is either bigger size or unpleasant color, she will never complain. She can only say, mommy, thank you. How many of you agree with me? That is what she will say because in the first place, she believed that she doesn't deserve it. It's a gesture of love. But your daughter can tell you, mommy, I've told you not to be buying things for me. You give me money to go and buy myself. She can even say, I told you I don't like sky, color, sky blue. Amen? <laughs> because she believes it's your right. It's your responsibility. But even though it's your right, your responsibility, learn how to be appreciative. If you are married as a young adult, learn how to appreciate your husband, appreciate your wife, appreciate your children when they do anything good, appreciate your pastor when they preach good sermon. Some sermons are not common on the pulpit. Sometimes I watch some people preaching on television and they are practically saying nothing and people are clapping, they are shouting and here on this altar we have been saying things that they have spoken here. Pastor Matthew have spoken, Apostle Simon have spoken and you are still sitting down, not clapping. Come on, make some noise. Learn how to appreciate. I remember some years back, I was transferred in Lagos before we moved to Abuja. I was transferred from one parish of Redeem to another parish. And on getting to this new church, I just finished preaching on a Sunday. It happens to be my very first service. And as... <laughs> As I finished preaching and I was going to the office, I saw two men running after me. And I stopped. Good morning, sir. They said, Pastor, good morning. And they introduced themselves. And I was to shake hands with them. And one of them squeezed 20,000 naira in my hands. And the other one squeezed a check of 50,000 in my hand. And I was dumbfounded. I said, what is it for? And they said to me, Good message, well delivered. I said, ah, 70,000. Good message, well delivered. In my heart, I was saying to myself, I did not even use my daughter. And this happened next Sunday. Hey. When you appreciate your pastors, they will do more. They will do more. For all our pastors, starting from our daddy in the Lord, the general overseer of this great mission, to all our AGOs, 
to all our special assistants and all our pastors, the entire CCG, to all the youth pastors. I want us to stand for our, to our feet just one minute and celebrate them with a clap offering. The whole world is watching you. Come on! Let's celebrate our pastors. It's important that we celebrate our home. That is faithfulness. That is faithfulness. Are you still clapping? Somebody shout yes! God bless you. Be seated. I believe they are watching you at home. And just watch out. On Sunday it will be another dimension. Praise see the Lord. Key number one, the key of obedience. Key number two, the key of faithfulness. Key number three. I know I might step on toes on this particular key. But anyway, the mic is already in my hand. Praise the Lord. I call it the key of diligence. The key of diligence. The key of diligence. Diligence as in working hard. Not as in hard work. Because prosperity and financial breakthrough is not a dint of hard work. Because if it is, those that dig well, they will be the richest. But it's a dint of working hard. Working hard. Working hard. The Bible says, yes, thou a man diligent in business. He shall stand before kings. And not before mere men. You need to be diligent. You need to work with your own hands. Who is our example? God the Father is a diligent God. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. The Bible says, And the Lord God planted a garden at the east world of Eden. God did not wish for a garden. God did not prophesy a garden. God did what? He planted. God showed us how to be a farmer. God planted a garden. He took the exercise. He did it himself. He laid the foundation. He's a diligent God. What about God his son? John chapter 9 verse 4. John chapter 9 verse 4. The Bible says, I must do the works of him that sent me while it is there. For the night cometh when no man can walk. Jesus also said, My father walketh, he that all I walk. So God the Son is a diligent God. How do you know a man with genuine anointing? A man, you can't carry anointing and you will not be restless. Believe me. It's a true sign. You can't carry genuine anointing and you stay in one place. At 1038, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. In Acts 1038, with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about? He was busy going about. The Bible says he went about doing good, healing all those who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You need to be diligent. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that many of us claim their blessings today, this same God is a diligent God. When God called Abraham, God didn't tell him to rear cattle. But when you check Genesis chapter 12, the moment his blessings came upon Abraham, it was via cattle rearing. Abraham becomes an earth man. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, and God increased him. He had increased in cattle until he became great. What about Isaac? In Genesis 26, the Bible says that 
Isaac saw in the land, even though there was death in the land, it wasn't the palatable time and period. But yet Isaac saw. And the Bible said the same year reap an hundredfold until it became the envy of the Philistines. In Genesis 26 verse 30 said, and the man went forward. He was great. He went forward. He grew until he became very great. He had possessions of flocks, possession of eggs, and the Philistines envy him. In that scripture we found what is the first time xenophobic attack happened in the Bible. Abimelech said, go from us because you are much mightier than us. There's a kind of blessing that is coming upon someone in this auditorium after this convention. Anywhere you find yourself, you become the envy of your generation. In the name of Jesus. Isaac was a special, Jacob was a specialized farmer. The first farmer to use tractor and engines to plow. So if the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is your God, then you must be diligent. Laziness is a career of poverty. Do not enroll for such causes. Do you know what it means to be poor? To pass over opportunity regularly. When you pass over opportunity regularly, the Bible said the glory of the youth is their strength. Now you have the time. Seek him while you still have the opportunity, while you still have the chance to do it. I'll tell you, number four, very quickly, the key of investment. The key of investment. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 1. It talks about investment. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. After many days, you shall find it. Another translation said, invest your money in foreign trade. I love that translation. Invest your money in foreign trade. After a while, money profit will flow back to you. Profit will flow back to you. A lot of people are doing investments. And I bless the Lord for Pastor Matthew Ashimolo yesterday. Told us a lot of things about investment but permit me to add in this service seven investment errors seven deadly investment errors number one don't be greedy be satisfied with reasonable returns on investment you should not be greedy because these are seven deadly investment errors and you need to know it even if you invest you need to watch out number two don't be deceived by tricksters who would like to give you the price you've won in a contest you did not participate. I know many of you, you have seen that before. You just see the message on your phone. Congratulations, you have won 5 million naira. Text so, so, so to so, so number. And you didn't play anything. How come you won? Do not be deceived by tricksters. Number three, take time to investigate investment opportunities. Don't be trapped by hasty decisions on investment. Number four, insufficient diversification of investment portfolio can be dangerous. Spread out your investments. Do not put your egg in one basket. Spread it out. Number five, never take an investment decision without appropriate advice from your professional advisors. Poverty and shame comes to him that live without instruction. That is what the book of Proverbs said. You need professionals. Ask questions. Get instructors. We have people in the investment world. Seek advice. Seek counsel. Number six. You must differentiate between upward investment and downward investments. Because downward investment is an investment in which you consume whatever you spent money upon. You buy shoes, you buy suits. They are all downward investments. Whereas upward investments 
is the child that brings money into your pocket. This is what the man called Robert Kiyosaki called liabilities and assets, respectively. Don't forget, number seven, which is the last one. Never incur debt for non-productive purposes. Never incur debt for non-productive purposes such as barrier expenses like clothes, like foods, exquisite drinks, or killing several cows for the naming of your fourth children. You want to name your seventh child and you have to go and borrow to kill several cows. Don't incur debt on things that are not necessary. Praise the Lord. Key number five. The key of Titan. I made mention of this. But for those of you who are right, it take it down. I'm running out of time. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12. The Bible says, you have robbed him if you refuse to pay your tithes. It's written in your Bible. You have robbed him if you refuse to pay your tithes. Everyone must pay tithes. It's in the Bible. Abraham started it. You can see that in the book of Genesis. Or you see the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. Jacob continued the same thing. You can also see it in Genesis 28, verse 22. Moses confirmed the issue of tithes. According to Leviticus 27 verse 30. Leviticus 27 verse 30. God promises a blessing for it. In Malachi chapter 3, 7 to 11. Malachi 3, 7 to 11. There is a promise if you pay your tithe. Jesus Christ recommended it. Jesus himself in the New Testament recommended it. According to Matthew 23 verse 23. And Jesus himself received tithes. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 7 to 10. Hebrews 7, 7 to 10. Paying of tithe is not what you debate. It is a command. And don't forget key number one, obedience. And you must obey all commandments of God. As a child of God, you must pay your tithe. And finally, key number six, which is the key of sacrifice. The key of sacrifice. Beloved brethren, sacrifice is not defined by its volume, but by the value. Sacrifice is not what you choose to give. It is what he wants from you. Sacrifice is not to be done where you want, but where he chose. Sacrifice may not necessarily be a cheerful seed. I know God loveth a cheerful giver. But I'm talking about sacrifice. The Bible said, They that sow in tears, they shall reap in joy. They shall reap in joy. We have opportunity. Here again, we should not miss it. We are going to do two things very quickly before we close. I'd like us to rise to our feet. Wherever you are, please rise to your feet. Wherever you are, please rise to your feet. Do not forget key number one, the key of obedience. That is the bedrock on which every other key is mounted. You know you are here. One way or the other, you have not been obeying God fully to any of His commandments. Wherever you are, I would like you to raise your hands up. There is mercy in the house today. And we can equally join together and ask God for mercy. You know you have not been obeying God fully. There are things God has been saying to you. And you have not been doing it. Wherever you are, please raise your hand. If I were you, run to the altar. Please, wherever you are, you want to make up your mind from today to obey God. Please come wherever you are. Come to the altar quickly, quickly, quickly. You know you have not been obeying God. 
But you want to say from this platform, Lord, I am willing to obey you from now on. I'm willing to act into your word. Beloved brothers and sisters, wherever you are, please come. Come and say, Lord, I am sorry. Give me opportunity. Give me another chance to obey you. I am willing to obey you from now on. Please, wherever you come, ah, come. Come and turn a new leaf. Come and surrender to him. Come and tell him, Lord, I am sorry. I wish to obey you in fullness, in total, beginning from today. As you have come, begin to cry to God. Repent of all disobedience. Go ahead and begin to pray. Ask God, if you are yet to be saved, ask God to save your life. If there is anything you need to be sure of, you need to be sure of your salvation. You need to be sure you are saved. Beloved brethren, wherever you are, please come. Please come. And those of us, let's celebrate those who are coming. The Bible said, no man can come to him except he call. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, you are in this service, please go ahead. Cry to God and say, Lord, help me. I can now see the reason why I have remained on a spot. Lord, help me, help me, help me. Ministers, let's pray for them. Let's stretch for the house. Let's pray for them. Let's ask God to save their life. To write their name in the book of life. To forgive every act of disobedience in the past. And God should back up their new decision. Beloved brethren, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Those of you who are kneeling down, can you stand? Just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. You are before the God of heaven. Your maker is the only one who can save your life. And the fact that you have come is an indication that you have surrendered to his lordship. Eternity in the heavens, I want to thank you. Thank you for saving these lives. Lord, I pray, my Father, that you will forgive all manner of disobedience and you will give us another opportunity. You will give us another chance. In the name of Jesus, give us another grace so that we can exceed expectation. Our daddy in the Lord, our coach, has told us yesterday that we needed to do more. And Lord, my father, we have been praying since yesterday that Lord give us grace. For everyone hearing the sound of my voice at this time, Lord, I pray, my father, that Lord, you will empower us to do far beyond expectations. Many are waiting for us to fail. But we know with you on our side, we will not fail. You will back us up. You will support us. You will help us. In the name of Jesus. We surrender our life to you. Help us. Give us a new beginning. In Jesus precious name. And a better amen. And a better amen. Beloved brethren, I rejoice with you. I'd like you to look towards my right hand, which is your left hand side. We have counselors there. They just need your name, your phone number. And so that our daddy will continue to pray for you. Please remember the first key, obedience. And let's go towards that direction. God bless you. The rest of us, let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus in the house. Come on, look at this sight. Look at this sight. Imagine the sight. Let's go ahead and celebrate Jesus as they go. 
Let's celebrate Jesus as they go. Glory be to God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah, the man of war. His mercies endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, his mercies, his mercies, and glory forever and ever. of us shall we rise to our feet wherever you are please rise to your feet thank you thank you thank you for being obedient rise to your feet we are going to pray just one prayer point and I will tell you the next thing we are going to do before I leave this stage raise your right hand and say father I can hear you say my father Every financial captivity, every financial bondage, let them be broken off in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray. Lord, break off every limitation, anything that will not allow me to exceed expectation. Lord, break it off. Every financial limitation. In my finance, oh Lord, break it off. Everything that wants me to be stagnant, I refuse to be stagnant. Open your mouth and pray. Lebrano seke tale bosha. Meke prale ke torias. Ingre meke kenro moko shendere moko torias. Go ahead and pray. Let the yokes be destroyed. Let the yokes be destroyed. Let the yokes be destroyed. Every cause of limitation be broken. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Very quickly before we go. Apostle Paul said, My words and my teaching are not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and of power. Any word you hear that you did not act upon may not do you good. We have heard the word today and I want to challenge you. The Bible says, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Excuse me, sir. Anything you want to become in life is entirely your choice now. Is entirely your choice. At this junction, I told you while I was ministering, that to be poor means to pass over opportunity regularly. I want to give you another opportunity to be a kingdom investor at this time. You know you are here. We have started this convention since on Monday till now. And I want to tell you something very quickly. If there is any time to give, it's equally when you have nothing to give. Sacrifice is not defined by its volume, but by the value. Wherever you are, you want to support the convention. You want to support evangelism. 
You want where you could not get to your voice to get there. You want to support the movement of the youth affairs. Let me see your hands up. And you want to support your own destiny as well. Let me see your hands up. Let me see your hands up. Let me see your hands up. Now when we talk about sacrifice, it's when you give something that touches you. As many of you that want to do sacrificial giving, I'd like you to run to the altar at this time. Wherever you are, we have testimonies of many people who have given in the time past and God has changed their life. But time will not permit us to go into that. If you love Jesus, you love the work you have received, you love the word you have heard today, this is an opportunity. You may not have another chance to be poor, to pass over opportunity regularly. You want to give sacrificially. You want to give something that will touch God, that will touch you. David said, I will not give to God that which will not cost me. You want to give something that will cost you something. Wherever you are, please run to the altar. Run quickly. I didn't say walk. Run. Run to the altar. A piece of paper will be given to you. You write your name, your phone number, and what you are giving. Or you can equally copy the account. The account number will be displayed on the screen. So you want to do transfer, it will be displayed on the screen. Whatever it is, you want to give to support the youth movement. Please, wherever you are, come. You want to give a hundred thousand? You want to give a twenty thousand? You want to give a ten thousand? You want to give a five hundred thousand? You want to give a millionaire to support? It is your choice. You know where you are going to. You know what you are trusting God for. There is a platform for you at this time. Please come wherever you are. I bless the Lord because our dad in the Lord is around to pray for you. But before you do that, please come. Wherever you are, please ushers, give them a piece of paper. Write what you want to give. Write what you want to give. This is what you have to do within the next seven days. The account number will be written. This is what you have to do. Within the space of seven days, I challenge you to be a kingdom investor. I challenge you to work out your own financial boost by yourself. It's time to sow. Only those that sow will reap. Sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. Sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. Please write your name, your phone number, if possible your province or your region. And write the amount you are giving. You want to give 500,000, please write it. A million naira, just write it. Whatever it is you want to give, write it. You want to give 100,000 to support the youth movement, please write it. Go ahead and do that quickly. Go ahead and do that quickly. And while we're doing that, I humbly would like at this junction to invite our daddy in the Lord, the intercontinental youth pastor. The pastor in charge of region 35. The rest of us, please jam your hands together as we invite daddy for his blessing. <laughs>